not the easiest thing to understand if it's time to dethatch or not. So I wanted to bring you through this lawn. Uh, it's pretty obvious for me on what's going on, but I kind of wanted to show you guys to see if you guys have the same problem at home. All right, so I want to bring you through this lawn so you can kind of see exactly what's going on and what I'm talking about. But you can kind of see the variations in color where it goes from green and then to brown. And then you'll start to see where the, the nutrients aren't pushing through the lawn very well. We've got these uh, tufts of grass that are pushing, but nothing else is. Now, as we get a closer look in the lawn, you'll see that we have a lot of less desirable grasses throughout the lawn. And then once we get on top of the lawn, you can really see where the, where the color is being clouded. Now, when we get in here, you can, you can also start to recognize that the grass, the dead grass is matting. Um, but really when you start pulling on it, it just, it just comes out because it's not, it's not alive. It's not attached to a stalk or a stem. And then all of a sudden we have ground. Now, when we get this thick like this, this dead debris starts acting like a weed barrier, which is the exact thing we don't want it to do because it's going to make it difficult for the oxygen to transfer up and down. And it stops rhizomatous tendencies, which are the tendencies for the grass to make a new stalk and to kind of leaf out. Now, at one point, my opinion on this lawn is it used to be Kentucky bluegrass and bluegrass likes to kind of leaf out really by a rhizome and uh, thicken itself up and self repair. But when we get this much debris, it doesn't have a chance to do that. So today we're going to remove it. Now I'm going to be very straightforward to everybody at home. This is probably the worst job ever to do. It's hard on your back. It's hard on your legs. It's hard on your arms and it takes a lot of time. Now, you can actually fill a couple of garbage cans full of grass on the average lawn. This shouldn't always be done. You don't always want to remove that layer of debris because it does harbor a lot of beneficial bacteria. However, when we get to this point where it's that thick, not only is it crowding color, it's crowding our new growth and we've got to do something about it. So our first step in this process is we want to lower the mow height just a little bit and we want to see if we can take off as much of this dead debris off the top to save ourselves as much stress as possible when we start removing it. So take that uh, mow height down a couple of notches. Um, I prefer with Kentucky bluegrass to mow it down to a minimum of two inches in the midsummer. Um, and then if we're like early spring, I'll take it down to an inch and a half because it's going to be less stress, less growth. All right, so we're halfway through the mowing process and so you can kind of see it's really exposing a lot of that dead debris. There's really just not a lot of grass here, unfortunately. Now today I'm going to be using a Bluebird power rake. You can commonly find these uh, at the hardware rental shops. They do a good job. They've got flails that run a 50 to 1 ratio when it spins. And the idea is these flails score the ground and pick up the debris that's sitting on top of the soil. Now over time, you're going to get too much of this debris from improper mowing, improper watering, and it's really important to get it off when it starts clouding your color or when it starts choking out new rhizomatous growth. Now, just to be clear, it's not always necessary to power rake. How you know when it's time to power rake is you get in the lawn, you fold it over as if you're parting your hair. And if you cannot see the soil and you've got a, you know, anywhere between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch, of lawn debris sitting on the soil, it's most likely need, gonna need to be moved out. Now, when it gets matted down like this, this is going to cloud your overall color. Now, some of you guys might get frustrated with your local uh, spray companies because you feel like the color isn't good enough after they've done the spray, when in all reality, you just have a lot of dead matter that needs to be removed. So that way you can expose the green color that's underneath it. All right guys, here we have it. the Bluebird Power Rake. As you can see, it's on the transport setting right now, which is the highest setting. It lifts the deck off of the ground. Underneath here, we've got these uh, flails. that spin a 50 to one ratio. And they just score the ground. So they're just flat discs. You can see they're not very 
not very wide and their only job is to spin really fast and they hit the ground and knock the debris off the ground. Now to start the machine is pretty simple, it's just like a regular lawnmower. We have an on and off switch, pull start, choke, gas on and off. And then up here we have our lever that we just pull that causes the flails to spin. Now step number one in the process is we want to start high and we want to take a test pass. So you usually go about three feet on this test pass. And then we're going to slowly lower the deck one notch at a time until our desired height. Now a lot of you guys wonder out there, what is the desired height? Well, it's the step below scalping. So sometimes you have to learn that lesson. Today we're not going to scalp, but we're going to get right at that step. So I'm going to start at the higher setting, then we'll go from there. All right, now I have my two passes here and I kind of want to show you the difference. So this one right here was on the level three and this one right here was on a level four. Now we're picking up debris, which I'm totally happy with and the grass isn't really scalping. Um, I wanted to see if I get a little bit more aggressive than that, but we start really ripping a little bit and you can see a lot more live grass in here but also roots now we don't necessarily want to rip out the grass so i'm going to put it back to that other level and that seems to be the best for us so we'll change this from the level four back to the level three Now, as you guys can see, I mean, we picked up a ton of debris out of here. Now, I know there's a lot of controversial uh, studies done from universities. What I can tell you is they need to move out of the way of the doers. Once this stuff gets this thick, it's no longer beneficial. You can see here, it's not breaking down. The microbes can't eat this massive, you know, steak and break it down. It's just not happening. So we have to thin it out. So step number one complete. Step number two, we're gonna clean this up and then we're gonna cross hatch it. Now a lot of you out there are probably wondering, hey Ginja, why didn't you just use the mower to pick up all the debris? Well, in all reality, I just feel like it takes longer to use the mower because um, the bags are smaller. Now, if you have a ride-on lawnmower, you know, with uh, two 25-gallon bags on the back, that's actually doable. But when it comes to a push mower, I would much rather just push the debris out of the way. And hey, if you can sucker a friend into it, it goes twice as fast. Our next step is to crosshatch. We want to go the opposite direction, or at least vertical of the direction that we did previously. Now this gives a chance if the grass had folded over that we can really just uproot all the dead debris. All right, now that we've got that done, let's look at the fruits of our labor to see what's going on with the lawn. Now, the coolest part for me is the color change. You can really see live grass now, and that big patch that we were having dysfunction with, we've still got a little dysfunction that we need to address. However, when we get into the lawn now, you can see there is a lot less debris. We can actually see it's breathing and the grass is kind of perking up a little bit, which is kind of funny considering how much we beat it up. 
Now we're never gonna really be able to remove 100% of all this debris. I, I guess you could if you're really careful about it, but you really don't want to. We do want a certain amount of debris that holds the beneficial bacteria and decaying matter so that we can get those microbes going. Um, however, in these spots here that we have, we're gonna have to do one more pass. Now we beat up the soil pretty good. I, I don't wanna risk tearing anymore. So we're gonna move on to doing some spot thatching with a thatch rake. Now I find that the thatch rake is a very important tool and for those of you out there who don't mind hard work, you can use this for 100% of the job. Now it's got two sides. It's got these, uh, I'm trying to get the best angle for you. It's got that curvature right there and that is for cultivating we're scraping the top of the soil and this side that does not have that squiggly on it it's for removing debris now i got this one at lowe's it was about 35 bucks um, i'll post a link in the description where you can get it off of amazon uh, it's one of my favorite tools works really really well but the power rake saves us a lot of time Couple of lessons that I learned doing the thatch rake. I like to do that little pattern as you can see, but I mean, look at how much more I got. Um, I'm gonna end up having to go over the rest of the lawn because there's so much loose debris that we weren't able to pick up with the rake. Now this section's already looking 10 times better, but I, I consider it gummy thatch. The machine kind of breaks it up, but it doesn't pull it out. And so that thatch rake is a really important part of this process because it can really get in where the uh, power rake just doesn't. Ah, crap. Well, here we go. Let's get the job done. Do it right. Do it right. Let's go. Well, that sucked. <laughs> well, here we are. You can see my, my sopping wet hat. That's all sweat, it's disgusting. But uh, proofs in the pudding, guys. You can see, looks a lot more uniform, a lot more clean. We got the rest of the debris out. And uh, let's show you how many bags we got. Well, 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 look at here. A one, two, three, four, five, six 40 gallon bags. Mathematically, that is a lot of dead grass. And these bags are stuffed. Um, we didn't just loosely set it in, I mean. All right guys, to keep it simple for our recovery service, uh, our soil temperature is about 48 degrees right now. So I'm just gonna use this uh, Humates and Gypsum uh, concoction. It's a good blend and I wanna get some carbon in there and then I'm gonna be using Nitro King. It's made by Best. Don't focus on the brand so much as what it is. It's a 2124. Uh, it, we look at the back here. The one thing I want to avoid this time of the year is urea. I don't want that quick of a release, plus we're gonna lose 50% of it. So this is 21% uh, ammoniacal nitrogen, and we have a lot of uh, sulfur, 14%. Um, and that's what I want on my nitrogen content. So I wanna get this up to about five pounds per thousand because I want to get pretty close to a pound of uh, nitrogen on this recovery since the lawn is not doing so hot. Let's get it down. Now I get this question quite often, Ginger, what if it's hot outside? You can't do it when it's hot outside. Well, I did my own lawn when it was uh, 100 degrees outside. I've done it that way twice. Um, the difference is, is the amount of recovery solution, I put a lot more miners in it um, and I lessen the amount of nitrogen that I put on the lawn. Um, it does take longer to recover. Uh, so instead of, you know, two to three weeks to recover, uh, it takes about six weeks. So that is the biggest difference, but you can do it when it's hot. Um, you have to outweigh your options. Is it better to have this 
grass that's just sitting there that's acting as a weed barrier or is it better to remove it? Now, some of you might not be in a situation yet where it's acting as a weed barrier and it's just affecting your color. Well, in that instance, you may wanna wait till the fall time. Uh, give yourself a little bit of a break and give the lawn a break. But um, other than that, guys, if you guys have any questions or concerns, hit me up in the comments. Love to help you guys out, man. Uh, hate these jobs, but they gotta be done sometimes. Have a great day. Till the next power rate. Bye.